So after Mukhtar's um, movement ended, we'll talk about his followers because he was the head of a sect, technically speaking, and his followers had special beliefs. Um, and his followers prevailed uh, for many years as a religious sect. They, they lasted for a couple of hundred years before they were extinct. So um, they were referred to as Al-Kaysaniya or Kaysani Shia. Many of the people at the time simply referred to them as Sabaiya because that name was a popular label for all the Shia who were extremists at the time. Any Shia who was an extremist would be called a Sabai Shia, even if he was a Kaysani. As for the name Kaysaniya, where did it come from? This is because Al-Mukhtar utilized one of Ali's uh, slaves or servants. Uh, the man was called Kaysan. He probably paid him some money. And Ali had many, many servants. And, and that's assuming he was a legitimate servant, not just some fraud who was claiming to be a servant of Ali. So he took him by his sides, and Kaysan was a Sabai. He was an extremist Shi'i. And Al-Mukhtar promoted him uh, to, to head a division in his army. He was the head of the Shurta. Uh, this extremist Shi'i, this Sabai, called Kaysan, um, he was the one who came up technically with the idea that Muhammad bin Ali was the Wasi. So he kind of, it's a belief that muta mutated out of the original Sabai beliefs. So he said Muhammad bin Ali was now the legatee of Ali bin Abi Talib. And uh, he also made takfir, as opposed to Al-Mukhtar, uh, Kaysan made takfir on all of Ali's predecessors. So he made takfir on Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman. Um, and Kaysan also affirmed that Al-Mukhtar received revelations and that he was Ibn al hanafiyas deputy. So he was lying on behalf of Al-Mukhtar and Al-Mukhtar was definitely handsomely rewarding this man. Um, uh, the Kaysani Shia, they had some distinctions, obviously, uh, starting with Muhammad bin Ali. Um, they, they were the first to invent the belief in the active imam and the silent imam. This was a belief that was held by uh, Imam Shia later on, that there is always an active imam and a silent imam. The active imam is the imam of the time, and the silent imam is technically not an imam. He's basically the son of an imam, and he basically has no authority, he has nothing, and he becomes an imam when his father dies. So they invented that, and they said that Muhammad bin Ali was the active imam. But he went into occultation, he went into ghaibah. And the mountains, and this was a punishment uh, for, from God. This was a punishment from God for Muhammad bin Hanafiyah, because Muhammad bin Hanafiyah pledged allegiance to Abdul Malik bin Marwan. So God banished him into the Mount of al radwa as a, punish, uh, as a punishment, uh, 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 the same way he banished Adam uh, from paradise to earth, basically, alayhi salam. So Ibn al Hanafiya, for them, is in a state of ghaibah, is in a state of occultation, absence, concealment. Um, in those steep mountains, they say that he is protected by a lion and a tiger, surrounded by rivers of water and honey, um, and that before Muhammad al Hanafiya went into occult occultation, he, 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 um, he appointed before departing, he appointed his son Abdullah, who was known as Abu Hashim, as his own legatee, as his own wasi, so that he becomes the leader after him. <clears throat> so um, Abdullah, who was known as Abu Hashim, was for them the silent imam. He was a temporary silent imam until his father's reappearance and reemergence as Al Mahdi. Right? So Muhammad Hafiya was going to come back as the Mahdi. Some Kaisanis or Kaysanites, went to extremes and claimed him as a god. So they claimed the man as a god, just the same way the Sabais claimed his father was a god. So they claimed Muhammad al was god now. And that the divine element was transferred <coughs> from Ali to his son. While others kept the leadership going in Ibn al children, some claimed that it went to Ja'far bin Abi Talib and his children, and finally, a large group said that Abu Hashim, Abdullah bin Muhammad bin Ali bin Talib, passed on the divine legacy to the children of Al-Abbas. And this was an Abbasi movement then. So these extremist Shia were greatly utilized by the Hashemites, especially the Abbasi, to later do a revolution against Bani Umayyah and topple their regime. So what we have here is the first instance of transfer of Imam. So previously, the Sabais only believed that every prophet had one 
legatee, one wasi, and the Prophet's legatee was <coughs> Ali bin Abi Talib. And that's how that was the end of the story for them. And Ali would reappear at the end of times. But now you have these Kaisanas that introduced a new element, and they were saying, no, it was transferred. So they transferred it from Ali to Muhammad al And some of them went further and transferred it from Muhammad al Hanafiya to um, his son, uh, Abu Hashim. And, and different Kaisanas transferred it to different people. Some said to the children of Abbas, some said to the children of Jafar. This, uh, at that point, that became that concept, that uh, belief, started to, to, to appear among the Shia. Also, at the end of this stage, we want to mention that uh, a group from uh, Banu Asad, and Banu Asad are known for being a pro Shia tribe, uh, they moved to the region of Qum after Al Mukhtar was defeated. So they were supporters of Al Mukhtar, and Al Mukhtar was defeated, they moved to the area of Qum. Um, so the Shia presence in that area increased uh, more and more. 